What's up guys? This is Ninja Spartan 23. I'm here with Luke. I just got back from the tour. Oh, that was yesterday. Uh, this is going to be a long video, so bear with me. It's unedited, completely unedited. I just mushed them together and called it good. So if this isn't your kind of thing, it doesn't matter to me. I don't really care. It's going to be a long video, so if you sit through the whole thing, good job. I'm not going to I'm going to stop talking right now. Here is the t Alright guys, we did get a new bench put in today. It's still got wet concrete on it, so we can't sit on it quite yet, okay? Okay. <laughs> People all the time are like, can you sit on it? No, Concrete's gotta sit on it. Or is that when we get cold? <laughs> yeah. It starts to hear and then it's breathing off the other side. Alright guys, bit of a history lesson before we go inside of here. In 1884, a little nine-year-old boy by the name of Alpha Kinsey is the first one with documented discovery of this place. A nine-year-old. Yep. His family owned a ranch not too far from here, and they ended up losing some cattle. So his dad sent him off to go look for them. As he was looking for the cows, he stumbled upon this place. Obviously, back then it was different. There were no stairs or electricity. In fact, there was a huge ice pond that spanned from the original entrance 50 feet out from where that was. That original entrance was located about where that door is, but it was only about two feet by three feet wide and entirely encased in ice. Once he crawled through that entrance, he slid down a small ice slide, and when he was inside, the ice was so tall and so far forward, he could only go back about 70 feet, and he had to crouch below the ceiling. Today, we'll go all the way to the end of the cave. After that point until the early 1930s, Shoshone used this as a refrigeration system. They would send people down here to chip out blocks of ice, those people would then carry the ice all the way back up to the gift shop and load them up onto wagons. Once the wagon was full, they would layer straw and lava rock on top of it to try to insulate it. They would then take it off to town. It takes us roughly 20 minutes to drive to Shoshone. Back in the day, it took over eight hours by wagon. But even in the hottest heat of the summer, they would still have at least 75% of their ice by the time they got to town. Wow. Because of this, Shoshone likes to boast that they were the first town this side of the Mississippi with ice cold beer. In 1932, though, the government stepped in. They wanted to make this place similar to Craters of the Moon, a national monument. They built these steps that we've maintained and did a few other good things, but they also made a very big mistake. They took dynamite and blew out the front entrance right here, trying to make it more accessible. In doing so, it upset a very delicate airflow system inside, which I'll explain at the back of the cave. It took about 10 years, but all of the ice inside of the cave melted. Fearing no ice meant no money. They abandoned the project and left this place vacant for quite a while. In 1954, our founder, Russell Robinson, got back from the military. He had been here as a little kid and he loved the ice caves. When he came back to see it empty with no ice, it sparked something inside of him. He went to the government, got a lease on the land. He spent almost 14 years building and perfecting this wall so that the ice would continue to stay and rebuild. After that point, this is where we take over. The lease is still in the family name. It's part of his family that owns it today, and we've been doing tours for almost 79 years. Do you guys have any questions? All right, guys. This door is spring-loaded to close. Make sure you hold it for the person behind you, okay? I can already see my breath. Me <laughs> too. Wow. It's like Never five steps that. and then it's open. It's got to it? be that way, though, for the airport. Oh. <laughs> Small steps. This is way cool. It's cold. Alright guys, as you get down here, if you look off to your left hand side, you'll notice a thermometer. It's around 28 degrees Fahrenheit, which is typical for this time of year. There's times when it'll get as hot as 120 oh, degrees know. outside. Only be about 30 degrees here inside of the cave. There's also times it'll be negative 25 degrees Fahrenheit outside, positive 25 here inside of the cave. Wow. We only range in about a 5 degree difference, even in extreme weathers. You'll also notice right over by the thermometer, there's some ice crystals on the wall. There's also some along the rest of this walkway on the walls. 
That's from us doing tours. Every time we breathe or talk, a little bit of condensation comes out, sticks to the walls, and slowly freezes over, creating these pretty crystalline structures right here. Do you guys have any questions? No. All right. Where's the cold beer? <laughs> Not down here. That's in Shoshone, in town. I guess in the 60s, because it was the thing to do, the first tour guide to bring down a six pack, and at the end of the day, the last tour guide to pull it back out. But they haven't done that for quite a number of Ooh, years. It's slippery. Yeah. It's dripping a little bit. Did they ever find the cows? I don't know. They were probably present. I wanted to know that same thing. I don't know if they ever found the cows that got out. I just know that part of the story about the discovery of this place. I asked the same thing when they hired me. I said, so what about the cows? And nobody knows. All right, guys, if you look at this rock pile right here in the center where that light is, you'll notice a pile of bones. Wow. It's actually a prehistoric grizzly bear and her two cubs are around 12,000 years old. They figure she came in here one winter to hibernate, ended up falling behind an ice wall, having her cubs out next spring, and they were never able to find their way out. In fact, in the 40s, when the cave was almost all the way defrosted, they found her in the back, and she still had all of her fur. But because the warm air was coming in and the government had no way to stop it, rapid decomposition set in, and now it's the bones we get to display. That green you see growing on her and some of the stuff around her, it's an algae. It's called lichen. It is the only living thing inside of this cave other than us. Any questions? All right. <laughs> whole bridge is shaking. I just slipped when I stopped. <laughs> I slipped when I stopped. <laughs> Jim, stay right there. Let me try. Um, oh, on. Dad's in the back. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Stay right there. Come on. All right, guys. I'll explain a little bit of water on top of this, but first I'm going to explain this archway. It's coming from the direction we just came. This archway was created when the lava flowed through here around 65 miles an hour. It had a bunch of gases. Those gases pushed up on top of the molten rock that was above it creating the archway. Once the lava flowed through, the gases followed behind it, leaving this tube entirely empty, thus creating the cave. Arches cool. in construction and many other things are very load-bearing. That's why they use them on a lot of bridges with high traffic. That being said, this supports over 100 feet of lava rock on top of us, and this is what makes it safe for us to do chores. Cool. If you guys turn the other way, the center of this light right here is the deepest point in our cave. That is 13 feet of solid ice all the way down to the bottom of the cave floor right there. The little bit of water you see on top, there's usually only about two to five inches worth in any given area, is our new ice getting ready to form. Whenever it rains or snows, once it melts, that water slowly makes its way through the lava rock on top of us, taking anywhere from three to five days to get down here. Once it gets down here, it slowly drips and pulls up on the surface like you can see and hear it doing right now. Usually in July or August, when we're done having our rainy season, it'll take anywhere from a week to an entire month to completely freeze over. Any questions? All right. Should have brought gloves. I do. Eh. Just think of hot chocolate or something. <laughs> Visualize. Yeah, right over here. That'd be nice. A legit man cave. <laughs> Might melt some of the ice though. That's way cool. Alright guys, over here on your right hand side you'll notice these stalagmites. Now these ones weren't actually formed in this cave, they were formed in a sister lava tube that connects with this one. But our founder brought them over here to show you what they look like and how they're formed. In a normal cave, take a calcium cave for example, water pulls up 
down below and deposits slowly fit together to create something like this. These, however, are made when the lava flows past, some of those gases that do end up escaping take bits of rock and lava with it, and they create these. They're almost entirely hollow. The one on the left weighs only about 12 pounds, whereas the one on the right is a little more dense and weighs almost 20 pounds there. Any questions? Alright guys, this collapse happened the same time as everything upstairs, so around 2,000 years ago. And it did a very good thing for this cave. If you look up, you'll notice all these cracks and crevices that opened up when it fell. That allows water to get down here faster as opposed to as if it would have stayed intact. I've been told that on our very good winters, we'll have anywhere from six to 10 foot icicles hanging all over the ceiling in here. Wow. In fact, wow. when we started touring this season in the beginning of May, there were still three icicles up there that were all two feet each. Wow. Any questions? No. All right, we'll continue to the end. Awesome. Penguin? Yeah. Um, no? What? <laughs> Mushrooms right there. 
Okay. Oh, that's that's weird. It's stuff that they found in the cave when they were cleaning up and doing maintenance. Okay. And there's a penguin out front that's been there for a long time. And then, of course, mountain lion outside. Also from right here, if you look into where the light is, you can see the top of this starting to freeze over. Cool. It's pretty cool stuff. You know, I felt like asking you if I could touch the ice water. <laughs> you can, but it's really cold and I wouldn't suggest it. Uh, if people don't believe me, I actually have to get on the ice over here. It's not fun. It's super slippery and really cold. But right here, there's not very much water, so. Do you think someone could ice skate on this? Oh yeah, they have pictures of Russ and me ice skating in here, and this year, the tour guides are all gonna come down here and take some pictures. Cool. Just so we can put them up and show people, like, it really is solid ice. So, neat stuff, but. Yeah. <laughs> What's up, Pengu? Oh, that's that's creepy. <laughs> yeah, it's been here for a long time. I guess in the seventies they used to have Disney characters down here, okay. and also in the seventies and early eighties, there's lots of pennies from that time period because people treated it like a wishing well. However, I was always told if you want your wish to come true, it has to go to the bottom of the well. These will never get there. Huh. Uh, what are those for? Those are actually pipes that they've used in the past to pump out water. If we get too much water at one point in time down here, say we get 10 inches of rainfall and that all makes its way down here, it won't all freeze. And it can cause some of the ice to melt. Okay. Just like the top is porous, so are the sides, so that water can leak out. If we have just enough, like we do right now, it'll freeze over and create more ice. Cool. Yep. Alright guys, this is a low pressure wind tunnel. That means when we go outside that pressure skyrockets way back up there. It'll leave you feeling a little bit more tired and out of breath than you feel right now, but we will take a break before we go up all the big stairs, okay? Alright. Make sure and hold the door for the person behind you, please. Ooh, gets narrow. Yeah. Alright, I'm going to have you lead everybody. Okay. If you go around this corner right here and by where that bench is that it flattens out, wait right there for me, please. Oh. How are you doing? Did oh, you wow. Oh, jeez, I get what she meant by low to high pressure. Yeah. This was really cool. Liked it? Yeah, I filmed the whole thing, actually. I filmed half of it. 15 minutes. So. underneath it and then it kind of repeats that same process going down those are all different levels of lava flow the top is around 2,000 years old 4,000 6,000 and 8,000 years worth is what we can see it goes down well over 300,000 years ago which is past our last ice age 
our local college, CSI, comes out here and does carbon-14 dating, and that's how we get all of our years. Any questions? All right, you guys ready to continue on? Yes. <laughs> well, that's a different view. Does that go back underneath as well? I'll show you. We're actually going to go up on this side, so you'll get to see it all from the other side as well. All right, guys, we like to stop here for a little yes. bit of a break, but also to show you guys this part right here. This part of the cave was a lot shallower, so it didn't cave in as far as the rest of it. Noticing that all of this you can see right here is still pretty well intact. This is what the entire top of this would have looked like if it would have stayed up. Sadly, we had the earthquake, so, and now it's just a bunch of rocks. Any questions? Hmm. All right, we'll keep going then. Also notice that's where we started our tour today. If you guys turn around, you can get a much better view of the volcano and also look into its north crater over here on the right hand side, as well as follow the trail right from where we went into our cave all the way back to its source over there. Our cave is part of a trail system from this volcano that is four and one half miles long. From the center of this volcano, any direction you would choose to go, there is at least 10 miles worth of lava flow. Any questions? When was the last time you erupted? 2,000 years ago. Yep. It's sleeping currently. We don't have a hot spot. It's underneath Yellowstone. So we're not too worried down here.
another pocket created the same way. Those gases had nowhere to go, thus pushing off, creating the pocket with the archway. This one's just a little bit bigger than the other one. So the reason we don't have very many of these archways is there actually used to be a prehistoric lake out here. Today we know it is Lake Bonneville. The lava would flow out, crashing into the lake, cooling too rapidly to create these archways. So really, our cave at 1,700 feet long, almost all archway, is a miracle because there's no way it should have been able to have been formed. If you guys look across over here, you'll notice the highway. Our trail of this actually continues across that highway and goes out right to the base of the farmland just below that hill out there. Do you guys have any questions? How long did it take us to get there? Over there? <laughs> a while. You guys ready to head back? Yeah. All right. I want to throw this at something. <laughs> your thoughts on the tour. <laughs> Serious, your thoughts on the tour. I liked it. Okay. That's great. Enthusiasm. That's great. <laughs> Cold, but good. <laughs> Here you go. Take a picture of this. Oh my. God. What is that? <laughs> so I filmed the whole tour. Oh, you did? Yeah. My camera is just about packed. I have, I have like three. I have like three minutes left. Change your disc. Uh, no, I need to delete some stuff and put oh. this on my computer. Remember when I used to get these? I used to get these, like, <laughs> every time I went to the dentist. What the heck? It was dinosaur. The man Okay. Oh, it's a problem. Back. Got some fake diamonds. <laughs> You didn't hear that from me, though. According, as far as you know, they're real. <laughs> Why were you wondering what was real? I was making a joke. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. I was like, most of these rocks are real. So the ones over there that they man-made. It's so weird. Yeah. I want to buy some. These are cool. Those are rose. Oh, That's cool. What the heck is it? I don't know. It's a type of rock. Huh. Also, my hands are shaking because of how cold it was. 
Oh, what the? It's a ball of obsidian. That's way cool. What the? <laughs> this weighs about a hundred pounds. <laughs> That's crazy. Oh, thank you. Where did I say? <laughs> that, that crystal ball thing weighs like 100 pounds. Ooh, oh, wow. You should try and pick it up. <laughs> nah, that's okay. Oh. I don't want to be the one to break it. Oh, that's sort of pretty. Yeah. Dude, I cool. should have brought my wallet. You should have brought your wallet? Yeah. 